Okay, in this video we're gonna look at an application problem involving differential equations. So let's see our setup. A 100 gallon tank is initially filled with 50 gallons of pure water, so initially it's not all the way full. Um, brine containing two pounds of salt per gallon is flowing in at a rate of three gallons per minute. It's instantaneously mixed, and then the solution is draining out at a rate of um, one gallon per minute. So uh, notice that we're gaining two gallons per minute. So after a certain amount of time, this tank will overflow, and that's gonna build one of our questions. So we wanna find two things. First, a function describing the amount of salt in the tank, and then second, uh, the amount of salt in the tank at the time that it overflows. So maybe before we get started, let's notice some like preliminary fact. And that is uh, the volume of uh, water, or maybe we'll say brine, in the tank is given by this function v of t. And so, let's see, we can actually just kind of guess this, but it's all, it can also be derived because it's a linear function. So notice, we start with 50 gallons. So at time t equals zero, we have 50 gallons. And then every minute, we gain one gallon and we lose one gallon. So every minute, we gain a net two gallons, so we can write this as plus 2t, where this is the number of gallons of brine in the tank at time t minutes. So that's a preliminary fact that will be important for our calculations. So let's keep that in mind as we move on to building this differential equation. Good. So let's say y is the mass of the salt in the tank. Good. That means we can wait, write y prime as um, the rate that the salt is entering the tank minus the rate that it's exiting the tank. So we can write that as the rate coming in minus the rate of the salt going out. Good, and then we can break each of these into parts. So we can write the rate coming in as the following, maybe the concentration in times the flow in. And then we can do the same thing for the rate out. So this would be minus the concentration out times the flow out. Good. So now that we're ready with this um, verbal way of describing the differential equation, we can write it down as um, a proper equation. So now we have y prime is, so the concentration of the brine coming in, so notice that's two pounds of salt per gallon, so we can write this as two times, now how it's flowing in, so it's flowing in at a rate of uh, three gallons per minute, so we can write that as times three. So that's the rate that the salt is coming in, and so notice our units work, and we end up with, this is pounds per minute, so we have six pounds per minute coming in, good. And then the concentration coming out, so that's the same thing as the concentration in the tank. So the concentration in the tank will be the mass in the tank, which is given as y. So, you know, let's go ahead and write this over here. So this is the mass in the tank divided by the volume in the tank at that given time. Good, so just keeping that in mind, we're setting y equal to the mass in the tank divided by the volume in the tank, but the volume's changing, but we calculated that kind of as a preliminary fact. So here we can write this as um, 50 plus 2t, and now we need to multiply that by the flow going out, but the flow going out is just one gallon per minute, so that doesn't change anything.
And then again, this will be in pounds per minute. So let's see what we get. That gives us y prime equals six minus y over 50 plus two t. And then we have y of zero is, so our initial condition here is, we can read here that a 100 gallon tank is initially filled with 50 gallons of pure water. So pure water means there's no salt initially in the tank, so we have our initial condition is y of zero equals zero. Great, so by the bottom of this board, we've constructed the differential equation which we need to solve. So I'll clean up this board and we'll solve this differential equation and get to answering these two questions. Okay, so previously we constructed the following differential equation. So we have y prime equals six minus y divided by 50 plus two t, and then we have our initial condition, y of zero equals zero, and just as a reminder, y is equal to the amount of salt in the tank. Okay, good. So from here, what we can do is notice that this is our first order linear differential equation. So we'll write it in a more familiar form for first order linear differential equations. So that would be of the form y plus one over 50 plus two t times y, sorry, that should be y prime equals six, good. And so notice that this is first order linear where a of t is equal to 1 over 50 plus 2t and b of t is equal to the constant function 6. Good. So from the theory of first order linear differential equations, we know that this has the following solution. So it has the solution y equals one over alpha of t times the quantity, the antiderivative of alpha of t times b of t dt plus a constant where alpha of t is equal to e to the antiderivative of a of t dt. Good. So that's what we have. So let's calculate alpha of t. So that means that alpha of t in our case is equal to e to the antiderivative of 1 over 50 plus 2t dt. Good. So let's see. That is e to the natural log of 50 plus 2t. So we know since we have 1 over 50 plus 2t, it's got to be the natural log of 50 plus 2t. But now we need to check that this is right. If we take the derivative of this, we almost get this term, except we need an extra 2. Um, we would need an extra 2 in the numerator by the chain rule, which means we need to put a half out here to counteract that extra 2 that will appear. Good. So that's what we have. So the next thing that we'll do is the following. In order to simplify the exponential function and the logarithmic function, we'll use a logarithm rule to take this half and put it as an exponent here. Good. Which tells us that this equals the square root of 50 plus 2t. Good. Now um, we're ready to write down uh, the final solution to this. So um, let's see what we get. So we'll have y equals 1 over the square root of 50 plus 2t, great, times the quantity, the antiderivative of, now since b of t is a constant, I'll just write it out front. So we have 6 and then we have, this is 50 plus 2t to the half, so I'm moving back to that half power because it'll be better for taking an antiderivative, dt plus a constant. Okay, so we have that. And now let's get one more step in before we erase the board and move to the top. So this is going to give us 1 over the square root of 50 plus 2t. Good, and then we have that's multiplied by the quantity. So we have six times, 
So we're going to have one half from integrating this thing that has uh, the, the coefficient of two in front of t. So I'll have that times one half times two thirds times 50 plus two t to the three halves. Okay, so let's see everything we did there. So we increased the exponent by one to three halves. We multiplied by the reciprocal of the new exponent. And then lastly, we multiplied by the reciprocal of this coefficient in the 2t because we would have to use the chain rule. And then we have this is plus a constant. Okay, good. So now notice that here we have um, three times two is six, so that cancels this thing on top, and then we have twice this. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll get to the final answer. Okay, so we constructed this following solution, so now let's simplify it a little bit. So here we can write this as two, um, 50 plus two t to the three halves over 50 plus two t to the half. So we're distributing this one over the square root of 50 plus two t to both terms. And then plus a constant over 50 plus two t. And then here we can write the square root. Great. So now um, the next thing that I want to do is notice I can cancel this whole thing down here and then this half becomes a, sorry, this three halves becomes a first power. So that's one thing that I can do. And another thing I can do is take this, factor a square root of two out of it, um, and then we get 25 plus t. And then we'll absorb the square root of two into the constant. And so that'll give us like the nicest solution here. So in other words, we will get y equals. So now notice we can multiply two onto both of these because we no longer have an exponent. So we have 100 plus 4t plus some constant, which has been absorbed with the square root of two in the denominator, and then 25 plus t. Good. So the next thing we want to do is impose this initial condition. So notice if we plug in t equals zero, we should be getting zero. Good. And so, which tells us that uh, this c must be negative 500, because here this term is going to go to zero, this term is going to go to five, and so we have c over five is equal to negative 100, so that gives us c is equal to negative 500. Okay, good, and that tells us that the answer to one is the following. We have y equals 100 plus 4t, good, and then uh, minus 500 over the square root of 25 plus t. Good. Now let's look at how to answer number two. So for number two, we want to know the amount of salt in the tank at the time that it overflows. So we started with 50 gallons. We're gaining two net gallons every minute up to 100 gallons. So that's going to take 25 minutes. So the answer to number two is y evaluated at 25. And so that's going to give us the following. So we'll have 100 plus 100. So we'll have 200 minus 500 over the square root of 50. Good. And so that will be the final answer there.